Welcome everybody to the best start to Skyrim tips and tricks and OP build. Now it's completely up to you whatever character you want to choose. I like to choose a dark elf because he just looks so sinister. I feel like he really suits my sort of cell spell sword sort of a role play sort of thing. You know it's weird, I always spend about 15-20 minutes picking the exact same character I've picked for like the last five years. But yeah, first thing we're gonna do is uh Join the Stormcloaks because Imperial armor is worth a lot more than Stormcloak armor. So that's the only reason we choose to uh, side with the Stormcloaks. And whilst we're in Helgen, we're just gonna loot as much Imperial armor as we possibly can. The only other thing in Helgen that I would suggest is just this uh, mage thing here. Now you can pick up Frostbite Venom from the Spiders, but. It's nothing game changing, I'll say that. So yes, this is all we need to do right here. Now as soon as we escape hell, this is actually how fast I run in real life. We're gonna go to the bandit camp, which is located to our left. And in this bandit camp, there is a one-handed skill book, some black mage's robes, and something else I can't remember. But yeah, this is the first thing I do all the time when um, when we get to Skyrim. We gotta loot all these booties up. One of them has a treasure map which is full of treasure. Well, it depends what level you go there, actually. So boom, let's get the robes. Oh, cool, we're so cool. That's actually a really good read. There should be a Skyrim book up, shouldn't there? And now we'll go to the Shrine of Talos and get her, what do you call it? The Falmer Dude. The Falmer Dude will always have two things on him, his robes and something else. It's completely random, don't ask me why. So we got there and there. Now we're going to go to Embershire Mine. If you haven't got a two-handed weapon, we're going to go there to get a two-handed weapon. It's located right there. And we're not going to get any standing stones yet until we get the uh, leather stone and mark off. Because I believe that's the best. But there's always a two-handed weapon here. Because we've got to pick up the two-handed gauntlets from White River Watch. I think it's called a White River Overlook. Now, what we want to do is buy as many soul gems as we possibly can. Preferably empty because they're cheaper. And this is going to sound weird, but the first three levels we level up is going to go into Conjuration because that will help our enchanting and our smithing, believe it or not. I know what you're thinking, how can Conjuration help your smithing? Well, just watch. Watch till the end of the video because I think that's when the smithing tutorial starts. So we're just going to sell everything here, all this Imperial Shizer. We've killed this guy for his iron hand gauntlets. So we got two hand weapons and that. If you're doing a two handed build, this is obviously great for you. I mean, I'm just a beast, look at me. Arr. Picked up an amateur Xenophar in Emma Mine. I'm probably saying that wrong. But yeah, this is here, just over White, White River Watch, that's where it's gone. Where do you want to go? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Markarth. Just get the carriage to mark off. I'm gonna get two bounties. One will give us 500 gold, and the other will give us 400 gold after VAT and tax. So the first one is called Giga. <laughs> I can't even say it. Calls Giga Mine, but we're gonna get the uh, the Lover Stone first, and I'll show you exactly where to go. Like I don't want to just skip to Lover Stone. I want to show you the exact path, and I have no idea why. Because some of you may be confused, you know, you never know. But there will always be an animal here, depending on what level you come. It's a wolf if you get it early. If you get it later, it's a bit like a saber-toothed tiger. And we don't want that. So all skills improve 15% faster. Definitely the best stones get early on. Another thing, the force one of a force one bow, which is the same, does the same damage as an elven bow. So that's great to get because we won't be able to cast Bound Bow straight away. Obviously when coal, goes, coal Skegger Mine is clear, we just get all this gold ore out of here. 
Again, this is good for smithing as well, if we can find some valuable gems. I'm going to show you where to get the second bounty. So we've just killed the first bounty, which is the first one by And we want to come here early so the first one aren't that difficult to deal with. But that's why we picked up the two-handed gauntlet, so that would help us, uh, what you might call it, get rid of the first one. Because they're always tricky characters, the first one. But our second bounty is just ahead. We're going to keep on running. We're going to get our miles in, release some endorphins. And after this long run, we're going to have a stretch. We're going to stretch our hamstrings. Because the Dovican needs a stretch. And I believe the Sadia is the bad guy. You know, I believe the Red Guards are the good guy. Is he called Kamatu? I believe him. I believe him. And I believe Sadie is a sellout snitch that snitched up all the uh, red guys. So this is where our second bounty lieth. Come of the bounty, come of the man. Robbery is what it is. And just up ahead where you see that smeltering thing, there's actually a silver ore cave. We just got a gold ore. And in that cave is silver ore, but I, I didn't bother getting it. But I'm just letting you know it's there. So again, I use my ancestor's wrath to help me with these jabronis. And boom, die. <laughs> I'm so powerful in my ancestor's wrath. And now we get the bounty off this dude. I mean, I think he gives us 400, yes. And then the other dude will give us 500, I believe. So that's at least 12,000 gold in my maths. No, that's 900. It's not safe. And after I show you where you can get a third bounty, because we're going to get into the bound bow now. There's another thing I want to show you outside of Cole's Giga Mine. So we're here at Cole's Giga Mine. Follow me exactly. And then we go down here and there's going to be some flawless diamonds. I think a flawless ruby and a f f flawless garnet. <laughs> Very easy for me to say. And this is always here, so like, we're all like level one, level two, maybe level three. But it'll always be here. There should be an emerald as well. So like flawless ruby, flawless ruby. Yeah, there should be an emerald in there as well. And I never break a lockpick. My character actually should be called. I had no idea why I haven't edited this out of the bloody video. And why have I left this? Look, first time. Did it first time. And then what else are we going to do now? We're going to go to Windhelm and get the bound bow. But on that second ship should be a captain. What's he called? I think he's called Kajar. And that would be another bounty if you want it. Optional. You don't have to get any of these bounties, by the way. It's a Kalkajar. There you go. So he'll give you a bounty to do as well if you want. Again, optional. You don't have to do it. I'm just telling you what. I'm just telling you. Now I'll show you the exact path to go to get the bound bone. Look at this guy's sprinting technique. It's magnificent. We turn the left here and it's pretty much just a straight road. If you just follow this path straight, you'll end up near, I think it's called Fort Amol. 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 And that's where the bound bow is, which is so OP. It's, it's basically a Daedric bow. But it's even cooler, it's a spectral Daedric bow. And it's useful at all levels because when you get that level 70 per quick draw, it's really OP as well. So we're going to come here. We're going to ignore this crack dealer. Because we don't want any. Thank you very much. The Doverkin does not use performance enhancing drugs. What's it called? Fall ammo, yeah, boom. Just follow that path that I follow. It's literally just a straight line. Then we're going to endure. And once we clear the denizens of this uh, place, we go to... 
the corner of this bucket inside the bucket just about bow. Yeah, so what we want to do is every time we level put it into magic so we can cast a bound bow. We should be alright like 200 or 190. Now funnily enough if you pick a high elf you get 150 don't you? Then you can get the Actronox Stone which gives you an extra 50 so that's 200 magicka. So you can cast that straight away really if you want. Oh we've travelled to Rift and this video is going very quickly. I'm going to show you how to get a full set of August armour minus the gauntlets if you're doing a, a heavy armour build. Again, you can get this straight away at level 1. This is the Cursed Tribe Orc thing, so it should be very easy. So we have a full set of Orc armor now, except the gauntlets. That's just if you want the heavy armor build. And I'll show you where to get this Circle of Archery, which is here from level 1, which is outside of Froki Shark. So we have the Bound Bowl and... Um, a fortify archery thing. It's actually a bit fiddly and fiery to get. It's a bit annoying actually. The other circle of them. And it's 15% I believe yes. So straight away. So if you're just doing a stealth archer build. That's what we want. Right. We've sped up really quickly. So we're doing the main quest again. Look. Oh he's got 10 empty. Perfect. Petty soul gems is perfect for us. And you'll see why. I get a bound sword. I get candlelight, I don't know why, and muffle, and we want to get rays on. We don't get the one below it, reanimate corpse, I think it is, because we don't have enough magicka to cast it. And I'll show you how to level up your conjuration at lightning speed. So what we want to do is, every time we have a reanimated undead, if we fight someone, then uh, your conjuration skill will go up, especially if you've got, like, bound sword out. Like once these recognizable enemies, our conjuration will go up. You see, and all we want to do is get conjuration to level 30, which is very easy to do. And we just want to rinse and repeat this process, so raise the reanimator corpse like this, run to some enemies, cast bound sword, and conjuration will uh, will go up. Now once we get that to level 30, we can cast soul trap on people. And because we've been buying loads of empty soul gems, uh, them soul gems will be filled and we can use them to, you know, when we craft iron daggers we could put enchantments on that and that will help our smithing. Trust me, I've got it all in the bag. Now when we get to level 30, we're going to raise, like I say, so we want to save the first three skill points for conjuration. Because, and then that will go to um, cast soul trap on enemies. And the enemy of my enemy is a reanimated enemy. Who is enemy is a friend. So, boo, mystic binding does more damage, soul stealer, bound weapons cast soul trap on targets. Bada bing, bada boom. So, what we want to be doing is putting all our skill points into magicka. Up until the point where we can cast Bound Bow. And I love the Bound Bow. Now, now that we've got the thing on, I love the noise it makes too when it, you kill someone who's got Soul Trap on. Isn't that so cool? So, boom, so all the empty Soul Gems that we have are going to get filled up. Which is um, going to be incredible. And then we finally have enough magic to get the bound bow. I just love doing this. It never gets old. Like casting soul trap on enemies with bound bow. It's timeless. It's a timeless classic. The stealth archer is a timeless classic. But we won't be. We'll be at risk being a stealth archer now, but we won't be. Again, this is very early in the game. We're OP already because we've got the bound bow, a circle of archery. On top of our heads. So, I mean, we're already OP. And now we can start putting skill points into archery. I'm going to do one-handed myself. Now, this South Brittle Pass, this is just outside of Big Falls Barrel. You don't have to do that. But I'll show you a little trick here. If it's ice, cast fire. If it's a fire room, cast ice. It just blows it up. Just a little trick for you there. But yeah, when we kill the main guy, now you don't have to do this. 
I just always do it after I exit Bleak Falls Barrel and then just disenchant all my gear I've got. Obviously not my archery stuff. I'll keep that on. The stuff that, you, that you're using don't disenchant obviously. Until you're comfortable enough where you can enchant more in powerful gear. I'll give him his claw back. And of course it's been a while since we've seen him so we're gonna buy some empty soul gems off him as well. I always do that. Now we need I oh know wow we're really rushing here. We're really fast forwarding. We want to kill the first dragon in the main quest, sort of. Because then that helps spawn other dragons in. So, you know, we can start using words of power. Now we're going to get Lin here because we need her. Because we're going to fight a couple of dragons and a master vampire to get our words of power. Now the first dragon we're going to come across is around here. Now the first word of... This isn't where the first word of power is located. But... We need a dragon soul to uh, to use the word of power. And it's just here, and it's just sort of near, near where we need to be anyway. God, look at my kill cams, I'm so cool. So now that we have a dragon soul, we're actually gonna go to the place where has our first era, elemental fury spell. This is South Shriekwin Bastion discovered. And this is, uh, this is not far from that bone shell passing, so it, it works out. It's very economical for us. But now again, the reason we need Lydia, I mean, I don't like using companions because they always ruin my stealth gameplay. But there's a master vampire and there's a couple more dragons, so wow, I'm angry. So it's here near Falkreath and it's near that bone shell passage just come from. So this is the Master Vampire dudes. He actually been a sneak attack, but Lydia is just so, I don't know, heavy handed. You can hear from a mile away. And don't worry, I'll loot everything. Like I've ran past a couple of chests, but don't worry, I'll come back to loot them. But this is where our first word of elemental fury power is located. Now I'm going to invest in one handed and archery because you become the most OP there. Now we'll get our second word of power. Of course, as a dragon nurse, we need chlamydia to help us. But unlike last time, the actual word of power is here. Leather armor of the squire. And the third word of power, I believe, is located at the statue or shrine of Madeira. Madeira. But don't worry, you don't have to do the quest. You don't have to touch the beacon. Which is uh, very important. Here I just had to wait till the soul was absorbed. And now that I have the soul, I can shout. Or have the shout. And this is here, it's near Markarth. It's near that place where we got the second bounty from the dude. It was like robbery is what it is. These silver hands show up to help that guy. Again, the third word of power is here. You don't have to uh, touch the beacon to get it. Boom, grey elemental fury. Woo -woo. So that's near solitude. I can't oh, look at this beautiful kill cam. Oh my god. Look as the arrow goes whistling through the air. Like a airplane torpedo. So obviously we loot. This is where you get loads of iron. What's it called? Halted stream camp. This is what all you because we're going to start our smithing now. It's right outside White Runs. We get loads of iron ore from the The classic iron dagger technique. This is as old as Skyrim itself. But what we're doing is these are all for enchanting. So it's not. The smithing isn't going up here. But that doesn't matter. Because we're all about making money. No money, no problems. Right, so let's disenchant all the stuff we've got on our travels. Except for the stuff we're using. I can, I can, I'm going to keep hold of that archery thing for quite a while. I could keep hold of that smithing thing. And now what we want to do is see which is the most valuable. The most valuable is turn undead. So we're going to turn undead as many as we can. Boom, 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 boom. 
Now all the soul gems. Well, we have over, I think, 40 soul gems now. Or 35. Yeah, maybe just 40. Boom, look, we've gone from... Well, we've got 725 gold. I'm just going to sell all our shees. The Axel, I don't know, the Yarl gave him that thank you, Yarl Balgruff. What was he, 700 gold? To 4,000. So, boom. And we can just keep doing that, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I still have soul gems left over so I can make um, more iron daggers. When we get to level 30, we can make more thing. I can show you what to do here. We don't want to level, see how we can level up? We don't want to level up just yet. So we can train to five. Now you need to do the first mission for the companions to do this. So you can learn off him. And now when I level up, it restarts a thing. So I can do another five levels of him, if that makes sense. So you don't want to level up before you see him. You want to get the five off him, then level up, and then you can level up another five times. So in one session you can probably, you can do at least ten. Ten easy, because I'll go back to him now and get another five, so that's ten. So you could probably do like 15 or 20 in one thing if you have the money, but that's why we're enchanting our iron dagger. See, look, another five. Boom, 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 boom. So that's 10 already. Do you know what I mean? That's how easy it is to level up smithing. And now we rinse and repeat because we've got dwarven bows now, which are much more valuable than iron daggers. The best enchantment to get actually is called Banish, like Summon Jerek. Dramora ex expelled back to oblivion. That's expensive to buy, but it's, it's more than worth it. Again, just repeat this process. Your enchanting's gonna go up, your smithing's gonna go up, and your gold's gonna go up. Right, we've got 400 gold here. Let's see what we end up at. So we're all in 2000. So we've got 5,000, so we've gone from 400 gold to 5,000. We're on 6,000 now. That's how quickly it goes up. I'm worried now, what's it? Oh, what's that? Oh, bugger. Again, we can just completely melt this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh no. I just got a text off my father. We're gonna have to leave in five minutes. I hope I'll be able to record this in the end. So boom, I saw, I think we've leveled up like 20 times there. Just off uh, Yarling Raymain alone. All you have to do is the introductory companion's mission called Taking Up Arms, I think. That's all you have to do and then... So I can just keep milking this guy. So we're already at level 44. Oh, I need to burp. And that's all because we had that boom. Cast soul trap and target, so all that had to be soul gems. So when we run out of soul gems, we could just go to here. The college of Windsor, rinse and repeat. Oh, excuse me, I've got stomach acid for some reason. And yeah, this is. So if you want to get your gen into 100 and you're smithing up early, you can just keep doing this rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You don't have to do this. But this is, just gives you the gist of it, the idea of it. Now when you get to level 14, you can get a the Sanguine Rose, which is a, it makes you summon a Dramora, which is crazy powerful. And that's only when we get to level 14. So when we finish this quest, it'll give us this um, Sanguine Rose. And... Uh, so getting that level 14 is crazy there. Because like I say, it's a Dramora. I'm not a super OP. The only other Daedric Arthur I'd recommend getting would be as Black the Black Star in Az Azora's Quest. But you only need to get that when you enchant it as 100, because it'll fill uh, it can fill it with a Grand Soul Gem or Black Souls. Now another little thing here, if you're worried about money and you want you don't want to put your perks into speech. 
Just kill this dude and I'll give you plus 20 speechcraft. Like I see, I'm using my Dramora. It's very OP now. So like prices are 20% better. But this cave is pretty hard because there's always, um, what are they called? A Draga Overlord, Death, Death Lord Overlord. And there's always two emeralds up here as well, just in case you don't know. But um, yeah, so this made me want to bring Lydia to this one as well. Volsky, it's pretty difficult. It's near solitude. Now another little tip as well is if we go to Rift and you can get this at any level. The Agent of Mara, I think it's called the Book of Love Quest. And that will be 15% magic resistance. So you want to start talking shit to this woman here. And then at the end of the quest, there's three quests to do. No combat involved, no difficulty involved. You'll get the Blessing of Mara or the Agent of Mara. And that equals 15% um, magic resistance. So if you're a Breton and you had the Lordstone, because Lordstone is 25%, I think Bretons are 25%, so that's 50%. What's 50 plus 15? So you'd be 65% if you're a Breton. You can get this at any level. I think you can get this at level one, you know, which is pretty mad. Now, what we want to do, start an infiltration when we get our enchanting to 100, is go here to Trevor's Watch, start the mission infiltration. He'll give us a detect life spell, and that's how we'll get our alteration up to 100. Upon completion of this, this is just when our enchanting's at 100. And then we get the most powerful spell in the game, which is Paralyze. I realise it's so look we've got alteration and destructions cost twenty five percent less so it equals zero now because we've put it on four pieces of items. This didn't take a while to do to get my enchanting up to a hundred. If you just rinse and repeat that th uh, technique I was showing you, that's okay. So boom! Now you this will take about ten to fifteen minutes to get to a hundred because it flies up to about level sixty or seventy, but then it starts to drag. But once we get to ninety. Go visit our mate Tolf dear, and he will have paralyze on him. My mind went completely blank there. We can buy a paralyze off him, and we can have lots of fun because that is the best, that is the most powerful spell in the game. Again, this is end game, and with paralyze, it's really good if you miss all. There we go, it's really beneficial if you miss all your shots. Now, boom, we're here, hitting destruction. Having so much fun. I did a lot of damage to him before. And I hope you enjoyed this completely rushed video, guys. I love you. God bless. Stay safe.